Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to introduce methods to model unordered categorical data. So compared to the previous video where we talked about ordered logit and ordered probit regression, we now have again more than two outcomes for our um, outcome variable, but there's no inherent ordering to them, right? So we cannot say, you know, going from uh, uh, strongly disagree to strongly to disagree to, you know, uh, neither disagree or disagree and so on, where we have a clear, intuitive, inherent ordering to the discrete categories, uh, but rather we have just different distinct categories and we are, uh, we want to model um, predictive probabilities, uh, uh, whether in individual observations fall in either of those categories. Okay? Again, there are lots of examples in social sciences that, that are nominal, that are unordered categorical data, for example, vote choice in multi-party elections or uh, vote choice even in the US if you want to uh, take into account um, um, uh, third party candidates, for example. Uh, you could also, uh, you know, if you are studying um, uh, members of parliament uh, and you want to take into account uh, not only voting for you know, and against the pro um, a certain law or a bill or proposal, uh, but rather also taking into account uh, the possibility of abstaining as an additional outcome, basically, uh, you could you could uh, think of that as kind of unordered categorical data or un an unordered categorical outcome as well. Um, or, you know, uh, if you uh, wanted to uh, study um, um, committee uh, selection in, um, in for house members or something like that. Uh, and so you could uh, kind of study the, the choice of committees by newly elected house members, again, using uh, or kind of modeling this as unordered categor categorical data. So in summary, uh, as before with uh, the ordered categorical data, we have lots of examples in political science uh, where we have more than two categories that we would like to predict, uh, but we don't have this inherent ordering uh, to the outcome, okay? Um, so, uh, wait. Um, so uh, the way we will uh, go through this is we will stick with the same example uh, that we used in the previous video with ordered um, uh, categorical data. We're predicting party identification, taking into account Democrat, Republican and uh, independent identification uh, in the US um, in the US based on uh, American national election study data from 2002. Um, <clears throat> Um, and um, and uh, we're, we're using the same example to kind of think a little bit about what kind of modeling party identif identification uh, using ordinal uh, ordered probit and ordered logic uh, logit kind of implies in terms of the assumption versus modeling it as a, um, um, a nominal outcome without an inherent ordering. Okay, so we have the same the, the, the same outcome measure, so to speak. Uh, we have three different outcomes, Democrat, Independent, or Republican. Uh, but now we're not making the assumption that the variable it has uh, an implicit ordering. Right? We are now assuming that this is a nominal outcome. Right? Uh, for example, if we were to examine party identification in, in Europe, uh, in multi-party systems, it's not straightforward to directly um, um, order each of those parties in a clear ideological spectrum uh, so there it wouldn't uh, it would be it would be more challenging to to sort uh, you know uh, sort party identification outcomes the way we did it in the previous example but even for for this uh, you know example of uh, us party identification we could think about whether this inherent ordering uh, for democrat independent and republican really makes sense when we think about some how some of the predictors um, uh, influence um, uh, uh, influence the predicted probabilities for Democrat, Republican, or Independents, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, okay, so um, in order to uh, derive uh, the uh, multinomial logit, uh, or in order to derive basically a, a model to predict these nominal outcomes without a uh, uh, inherent structuring. Uh, uh, essentially, what we can do is we can just uh, uh, again come up with a with a link function and a, a probability distribution or a data distribution uh, that gives us 
predicted probabilities not only for two different categories for y equals one or y equals zero but now for multiple uh, categories okay uh, so here in order to specify this model uh, we just start with y now being a dependent variable with j nominal outcomes uh, ranging from one through j but there's no inherent ordering the same way we had it in the uh, ordered logit model so we can use the same kind of latent variable approach um, uh, with uh, you know estimating different thresholds because there is no inherent ordering in uh, in those um, in those categories okay instead what we have to do is we have to model the probability of y n being equal to um, j so to one of the realizations of the categories conditional on x n by using uh, this uh, um, uh, link function uh, using exponent uh, uh, the exponent of beta prime x n divided by the sum of the exponents beta prime x n for each of those uh, categories okay uh, and we'll talk about kind of the interpretation and the predicted pro kind of computing the predicted probabilities based on this link function um, in a little bit more detail in the Q&A session but the way you can think about this for now is similar to uh, the logistic regression where we kind of talked about the logit link as a link function that satisfy, satisfies our requirement of computing predicted probabilities that are bound between zero and one. Uh, you can think of this as a link function that uh, kind of fulfills again uh, the requirements that we have in the sense that we have now predicted probabilities that range between zero and one but not just one probability uh, but basically um, uh, uh, for our j different outcomes we have j minus one predicted probabilities essentially okay um, <clears throat> and uh, the sum of these probabilities or we have j predicted probabilities and the sum of these predicted probabilities all have to um, uh, equal one right because that's the uh, the, the full choice set okay um, <clears throat> um uh, yeah, so so essentially, again, uh, think about this as just modeling predicted probabilities now with a more complex choice set with multiple categories. And ultimately what we want, if we model this probability, we want to have um, probabilities that are always non-negative uh, and probabilities that sum up to one across all individual categories. And this link function essentially uh, um, um, satisfies uh, these requirements uh, and uh, the predicted probability for each of those categories uh, is then a, a function of a linear um, uh, combination of x of, of our xn's and of our betas and note here that the beta coefficient is a coefficient vector with a subscript j right so essentially what we're going to estimate is a set of coefficients for each individual category um, in comparison to some reference category and i'm going to talk about this uh, in a little bit more detail uh, in the example um, uh, predicting party identification uh, using multinomial logit in r okay um, unfortunately the multinomial logit is not directly implemented in stan uh, g or r stan arm uh, but we can still estimate a multinomial logit in R using STAN uh, by using the B, uh, BRMS package, that's Bayesian regression um, modeling using STAN. Uh, so this is another package that relies on kind of the STAN uh, engine, so to speak, uh, and allows us to, to um, um, estimate a flexible kind of, you know, a, a large uh, range of different model types, okay? Uh, we're loading uh, BRMS and uh, what we have to do is we use the BRM command. Uh, we have our model function here. Uh, party, ID in, uh, party ID is our outcome measure. Uh, we have ideology, education, age, um, um, uh, race, and gender. Uh, and now we have again a family. Uh, so the specifying the data distribution, so to speak, uh, uh, specifying that this is categorical. So it's a mo multinomial um, um, outcome uh, and our link is logit and this is basically uh, just specifying this link function uh, for our predicted probabilities for each of those categories okay uh, we can also do this uh, not relying on stan uh, there are a couple of different packages that uh, allow us to do this we can use the nnet package with the multinome uh, command um, where uh, we directly estimate a multinomial logit without specifying uh, an additional uh, kind of link function and so on because it's 
implicit in the uh, function call, or we can use the uh, mlogit uh, package where we first have to kind of uh, prepare the data set using the mlogit.data command. Uh, and then we can uh, specify the um, multinomial logit as follows. Note here, this tilde zero uh, is, uh, if we just estimate a basic standard multinomial logit, then we just have to include this tilde zero. Um, we can include additional components here if we want to estimate a conditional logit model. And I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video of what exactly that means. That would extend uh, this multinomial logit uh, framework a, a little bit further, okay? Uh, but just for the basic multinomial um, model, uh, um, uh, we can just include this tilde zero and then include the, the remaining model specification uh, here uh, after this vertical bar, okay? Uh, note here that uh, prior to uh, estimating this model, uh, in each of these cases, what we're doing uh, is we're specifying also a reference category in our outcome measure. The reference category that I'm specifying here is uh, equal to two. Uh, in uh, the original data, that means um, um, identification as an independent, okay? So uh, one uh, thing that is important to keep in mind when you're working with the multinomial logit is that you're always uh, estimating um, uh, coefficients with respect to a reference category. So basically, uh, with res like compared to um, uh, identifying as an independent, uh, an increase in a in a one unit increase in your predictor is associated with an increase or decrease in the probability of um, uh, identifying as a Democrat or identifying as a rep Republican, always compared to identifying as the independent, as the reference category, okay? Uh, so in that sense, if we look at the um, output of our um, multinomial logit using uh, the uh, Bayesian, Bayesian regression uh, modeling and STAN package, we see that we have a couple of uh, different, or we basically have two sets of parameter estimates, two sets of coefficients. Uh, we have um, basically uh, two different uh, kind of uh, comparisons. On the one hand, we have these mu one coefficients, which is basically uh, the, you could think of this as the coefficients for the comparison between independents and Democrats, okay? So basically, uh, for example, increasing, um, uh, for example, just uh, looking at um, race, uh, African-American respondents were more likely to identify as Democrats than they were uh, to identify as um, uh, independence. Okay. At the same time, if we want to examine whether Republicans, uh, whether uh, African American respondents are more likely to identify as Republicans, uh, we can look at mu uh, three underscore black here. So this is now the comparison between identifying as an independent versus identifying as a Republican. And so a negative coefficient here means respondents who who African American respondents compared to uh, other respondents uh, were less likely to identify as Republicans uh, uh, as compared to uh, uh, identifying as um, independents, okay? Uh, so it's always with respect to that reference category, okay? You could also kind of think about this, um, um, you know, an alternative way of estimating these models would be basically estimating uh, separate logistic regressions for each of those comparisons, right? So uh, basically uh, you estimate one logistic regression uh, where you j only include independents and Democrats, and then you look at the effect of, you know, the, uh, uh, or look at the coefficients for an one unit increases in your know, predictors, how that affects your predicted probability of being a Democrat versus um, an independent. And then you run a separate regression with only Republicans and independents uh, included in your sample. And then you have the, uh, these logistic regression coefficients for the probability of being a Republican versus being an independent, right? Um, uh, so when you're using multinomial logit, you're basically combining these, um, um, uh, these comparisons in, in one model specification. It is more efficient than just, you know, running separate 
uh, multinomial uh, separate logistic regressions, but you have to think about it in the same way that we have a com we have a reference category and we're looking at the coefficients, the effects uh, for each of those predictors uh, with respect to or in comparison to the each respective reference category. Okay. Um, again, obviously this. This has two implications. One, uh, it makes uh, interpretation a lot more difficult, right? Um, um, also because the coefficients themselves are always dependent on the reference category that we actually chose, right? So if we specified a different reference category here, the coefficients here would be, you know, not mu th one and mu three. If the reference category was one, this would be mu two and mu two uh, mu three, uh, and those would then again be coefficients for uh, the change in the predicted probability to be uh, independent or Republican always compared to um, uh, identifying as a Democrat. Okay, and obviously those coefficients would always uh, would also change. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the coefficients are dependent on the reference category, and uh, we cannot directly interpret those as uh, changes in predicted probabilities. We can talk about the direction, of course. Uh, but we cannot directly interpret those on the probability scale. Okay, so again, if we have models like this, we have to think about good ways of kind of conveying our, you know, the substantive uh, implications of the uh, coefficients of the, the the model results. Okay, and um, you know, chain like thinking about different alternatives for visualization, uh, uh, visualizing marginal effects, uh, changes in predicted probabilities across different categories. Uh, depending on your substantive um, question of interest, um, you have to kind of be, you can be creative of how you can communi communicate and best kind of convey uh, the substantive implications of your, uh, of your findings, okay? Uh, and so just to show you one example of kind of how to visualize um, uh, these results of a multinomial logit uh, regression. One um, uh, useful um, uh, visualization techniques uh, technique to keep in mind, at least in a case where you have three different outcome measures rather than uh, rather than two, is the uh, um, ternary diagram or the triplot. Okay, uh, and uh, I'm going to show you in the Q and A session how to set up this uh, this tri uh, triplot uh, in in R, but uh, essentially, what you can, for example, do is you can play, uh, you can plot on this uh, in in this um, triangle. Essentially, the predicted probability for each of those individual uh, um, categories that are included in your model, right? So we have uh, all the way up here. Uh, sorry, all the way up here, we would have basically a hundred percent probability of being uh, identifying as a Democrat. Uh, down here, 100% uh, probability of being independent, 100% uh, probability of being Republican. Uh, if we we're somewhere here, uh, say, uh, we would have a, um, or uh, let's say, uh, down, uh, let's say we're, we're right here, uh, that would be a 60% chance of being a Democrat, a 20% chance of being Republican, and a 40 uh, and a 20% chance of being independent. The closer you get uh, uh, to to this end, you are more likely to be independent. Closer to this end, more likely to be Democrat. Closer to this end, more likely to be Republican. Okay, um, <clears throat> and uh, now we can, uh, based on the model, we could plot, for example, predicted probabilities for each of those categories for different values of uh, the ideological self-identification. Okay, so uh, here as the individual uh, data points become uh, more uh, uh, towards the lighter blue, we have more uh, more conservative uh, ideology and for darker values we have more um, liberal ideology and we can basically see as ideology becomes or as the self-reported ideology becomes more more and more liberal we see first an increase in the probability of identifying as an independent okay and then uh, ultimately for uh, extremely liberal uh, respondents we have a very strong probability of being um, a democrat still a slight probability of being independent but certainly uh, a very low probability of being uh, identifying as a republican okay so this is just one example where you have a you know a you know a large set of coefficients um, 
and you're suppose you're interested in the kind of substantive effect of uh, ideological self-identification and the relationship of that and partisanship, uh, you could uh, you know use something like a triplot to kind of visualize how um, the predicted probabilities for each of those three categories uh, changes depending on uh, your predictor of interest. So for example here, depending on ideology. Okay, This is just one example. Of course, uh, this only works for uh, three different categories. If you have more than three categories, this becomes a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, but the key, um, uh, the, the, the take home message that I want you to, to keep in mind is that uh, you know the model as these models become more and more complex we have to become more and more creative in how to visualize our results and really convey you know the substantive implications of what we actually want to to study okay and so sometimes it helps to kind of think a little bit uh, outside of the box uh, and uh, and and think about what are the key comparisons that i want to make what are the key kind of uh, substantive implications that I'm interested in and what is the best way of visualizing those uh, using you know our draws from our posterior distribution using quantities of interest predicted probabilities and so on okay um, for the multinomial uh, logit there are a couple of uh, extensions and limitations uh, that we can talk uh, um, more about depending also on your uh, specific replication projects uh, that you're working on for the rest of the class um, one thing that I already mentioned is the conditional logit model. Uh, so um, uh, for the multinomial logit, uh, logit uh, one thing we have to keep in mind that all the coefficients we have kind of discussed are essentially characteristics of a decision maker, right? We, in our party identification example, we talked about uh, race or gender or uh, education or ideology. Those are all characteristics of the individual person who either identifies as a Republican or as a Democrat. Okay? Uh, we can also uh, extend the model to take into account characteristics of the alternatives themselves. You could think of in this uh, party identification example, if you had measures of, for example, um, um, uh, ideological placement or p positioning on specific issues or the distance between each individual respondent and uh, each, uh, each respective party, uh, then we have basically, then we can expand our systematic component, not only include these um, uh, decision maker characteristics, but actually uh, include additional com uh, characteristics of the alternative or the combination of the alternative and the decision maker. So here's Z and J, like the you know ideological distance between the party and the respondent, for example, okay? Uh, and if we expand this model, then uh, what we, we're estimating what is called a conditional logit model, okay? And now we're not only uh, examining how, uh, as I mentioned, decision-maker characteristics influence the predicted probabilities of each of those categories, but how also characteristics of the alternatives themselves influence um, predicted probabilities. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, another important uh, thing to keep in mind is that the multinomial logit, uh, there's one uh, important assumption that is being made, which is called IIA, or the independence of ir irrelevant alternatives. This assumption apply, implies that the presence or absence of another alternative should not alter the relative probabilities of any single decision maker. So uh, in the context of like multi-party elections, for example, uh, whether or not one party was, uh, you know, part of the election or ran for election or versus not shouldn't change kind of the relative decision calculus between all the remaining parties. OK, and obviously in a lot of cases, this assumption may not hold. Um, uh, and uh, to the extent that this assumption uh, doesn't hold, we either uh, need to kind of expand the model or, or, um, uh, um, uh, or, uh, or kind of evaluate to what extent that jeopardizes our, our, um, our inferences. Okay? Uh, so in general, the multinomial logit assumes this uh, or makes this IIA assumption and therefore cannot capture more flexible um, uh, substitution patterns across alternatives. So for example, if uh, one party uh, doesn't run in a specific area, uh, but most of those, resp most of those, um, the supporters of that party then move to another party, um, uh, then uh, that would be a violation of the, this IAA assumption and that cannot be captured uh, in the uh, multinomial logit framework. 
uh, we could use, for example, multinomial probits or nested logits, uh, basically a sequence of logit models um, uh, in order to kind of relax this assumptions. Uh, but here uh, we have uh, a couple of serious drawbacks as well, uh, computationally um, uh, and uh, kind of uh, coming up with this uh, nesting structure uh, can be difficult depending on your uh, substantive question as well. Okay, so this is just something to keep in mind from my own uh, perspective um, uh, or from my own modeling experience. Uh, I uh, rarely have, uh, you know, serious issues with um, uh, IAA assumptions or violations of IAA assumptions, uh, but it's nevertheless uh, something uh, to keep in mind, uh, at least from, from a theoretical perspective, and uh, think about how that might uh, implicate uh, your inferences um, uh, uh, and your substantive conclusions. Okay, um, that concludes our um, discussion of kind of uh, generalized linear models. This was a quick overview of a lot of different models for different outcomes. Uh, as I mentioned in the Q&A session, we'll talk a little bit more about each of those uh, and particularly focus on kind of visualization uh, with some practical examples. Um, uh, and then going forward uh, in the next week, we will talk about uh, some kind of extended or, or uh, additional topics uh, that are kind of relevant to, to any modeling task. Uh, for example, we're going to talk about uh, uh, power calculations uh, and uh, and multiple imputations and, and methods uh, like that. Okay, uh, so uh, I hope this was uh, useful. We're going to talk more about it in the next Q and A session, and uh, so I'll I'll talk to you uh, on Monday.